Okay, hi. So it's been really long since the world has changed the way it changed its approach to things. I mean, in the past four decades, we've destroyed 50% of our wildlife and forests. Uh, we still haven't found cure, complete cures to cancer, AIDS, diabetes, epilepsy, blood pressure, and so many other diseases. And we call ourselves the most superior creatures on Earth, whereas all we've truly done is destroyed the home we were born in. So all of us love participating in MUNs. And we talk about uh, changing the world and about world issues, but we only talk. We do nothing about it. Uh, so I'm 17, and I pursue the same IB curriculum as all of you in another school. Um, and other than that, I'm a social entrepreneur by profession and a maker by passion. I love using technology to solve real world problems. So how many of us want to make a billion dollars? Yeah, me too. And how many of us want to live in a better world than we live today with reduced pollution levels, reduced poverty, better health styles? Now, given today's current orthodox systems, you can only do one. So you have to pick. You either make the billion dollars or you save the planet and live a better life. Uh, I'm here today to tell you how you can do both. Uh, so look at the world today outside, especially in India. You have such high literacy levels, claustrophobic air pollution. I have asthma, so I can understand what, how annoying it is to face that level of pollution. And we're doing nothing about it. Now, ever since I was small, I really liked making things, be it art or technology. And in, in this whole process of, of participating in MUNs and scoring grades, we solely do it to show other people. Because if you look at it, education was meant to teach you something to gain knowledge. And it was meant for you to apply that knowledge in the real world. Whereas all we do is score these good grades to show colleges. So, since I was small, I loved building things. And I started with music MIDI controllers to make different sounds, went on to daily use objects, to automation systems, and then when I was 13, 3D printing. And since I was 13, I started a startup which makes 3D printers, and it's out today. Uh, later, when I was 14, I got the opportunity to work with the MIT Media Lab at their hackathons, and I worked with them till I was 16. And at that time, I created a we created a device as a team which accepted PDFs and text files which we read in English, converted it to Braille, and projected it out of that surface there with the six pins. So this was solely meant to promote digital Braille reading at negligible cost. Now, other than the social impact of this project, it had a potential market for 285 million users. That's social entrepreneurship to begin with. So another of my favorite startup Personally, I like this one a lot. It's called Shark Kids. Uh, I founded this when I was 13. Now, I learned and got introduced to technology through Lego Mindstorm. And I was lucky to have parents who invested that kind of money to introduce me and get me this toy to technology. But not all kids in India and Africa and other developing countries can afford the $400 price tag toy. So I believe that the only way to truly learn something is to learn by doing it and not merely look at other people do it or, or think about it. So Shark Kit, at Shark Kits, we design, produce, and market low-cost do-it-yourself kits where we actually give the person components and tutorials. So when he puts a kit together, he's learning a skill. And at the end of it, it's a product which he can use. That's our LAMP kit. So how do you start all of this? I mean, finding real world problems, getting solutions to it, forming companies around it, and raising capital. So I jotted it out for you. One, have the courage to face failure. 90% of startups fail. And if you ever meet an entrepreneur whose startup has failed, all he's going to tell you is, I learned a lot. He won't regret it. Know that you're not going to make money for a while. It took us two years to get to a stage where we could actually start selling products. The prototype to product stage is a long period. Be passionate about the idea of helping someone or changing something wrong in society today. Keep learning and keep meeting new people. When you learn more about your concept, you're, you're exposed to more perspectives. And meeting new people helps gain those perspectives because they would approach a problem maybe differently than what you are approaching it. And that would help you formulate the best way in which you look at your problem and come up with a solution. Once you've found something close to your heart, Think about how you're going to make it happen. And at this stage, you're actually 
ideating and coming up with ways to tackle that problem. Now, all you need to do is make, which is the easiest of all of these parts. And the, to end with, it, you get more, cap, more people excited about it to join your team, so you have a big team working together. You raise capital so that you can fund all of it, all of these projects, and figure out a way to pay yourself and these people who are working with you. And the last part is to implement it immediately. Because research is just philosophy unless it's implemented. I'm going to get kicked for saying this. So how do you start making things? I mean, I'm, I'm saying it as if it's extremely easy, but how do you start as a beginner? And where are all these platforms and these people to equip you with the skills and tools so that you can build all these projects that you want to? A platform like this didn't exist in India, so we started it. We call it Maker's Asylum. Uh, Maker's Asylum is an open space for people to come in, use their tools, learn new skills, and build whatever idea projects they want to with their ideas. And we have mentors who are around that place every day to help you build your projects. Now, Web of Chhabra, who founded Maker's Asylum, worked at the MIT Media Lab for two years at a startup. And he quit his job there to come back to India and push the maker movement here in India, and also to pursue his hobby of woodworking. Now, so all we truly wanted to do is give people platforms so that they can use their creativity to help save this dying planet. So do you really think that we, as people, are helping save the world in any way at all? We talk about it very often. All we do today is work for money, fame, and to live a glamorous lifestyle. Again, to show others, because which part of it are you doing for yourself other than the luxurious lifestyle? So for my education, I quit school in the ninth grade, and I rejoined school in the 11th grade. I quit school because I was sick of rote learning answers and vomiting them out in the exam, even though I was doing extremely well academically. And I got back to school because I couldn't maintain a perfect balance between my academics and my innovative activities. And during this time itself, when I applied to this school, my application was rejected to pursue IB here. So the main idea is to that money can be earned in novel ways uh, by helping society. Uh, and the money you earn through this way is directly proportional to the money you'll earn in any other way by starting a company like every other company in the world. And you're smart, so don't let that go waste. You're learning in one of the best schools, and you have the IQ and the exposure to be able to tackle these problems once you go to college. And Unless you're doing something about it, don't just whine and talk about it because you have politicians for that. And the world needs more doers and not speakers, so you need to join the gang. And Steve Jobs once said, the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. So thank you.